Hi, my name is Russell Stannard and I run a website called teachertrainingvideos.com. I'm currently working with National Geographic Learning and looking at some of their digital technologies. Now, National Geographic Learning have a range of tools and platforms that are ideal if you're teaching online. And in this video, what we're gonna look at is ways of making the live sessions that are often done with tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, etc., ways of making those live sessions more student-centered. Remember that the key to working with Zoom is, is the screen share option. So when you move your cursor down, you'll see that you've got the screen share button here. Click on that, and that's the way that a teacher can share anything uh, that they have available and open on their computer. Now, one thing is what we're gonna do is we're gonna share the Pathways Classroom Presentation Tool, but remember to click here because there's lots of audio and video on the Pathways Presentation Tool. So let's look at the Classroom Presentation Tool. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna click on Share. And we're coming in here at the beginning of the course. In fact, the best thing is if we just click down here, it's the easiest way to see the navigation. Lovely visual display of all of the units. And we can just simply click on a unit that we want to access. So let's start by clicking here on a thirsty world. And it's gonna now open up that particular unit of the book. And you can see that we've got access to all of the different pages. Remember, from the moment you click on the screen share button, your students can see everything that you can see. So if we click on one of the pages, let's say that we're gonna to come to page 66. What we do on the screen now is immediately available to the students as well. Now, one of the nice things is that we have a number of tools here at the bottom that we can use, and these can be very useful when we're working in Zoom. Let me just give you an example. Let's say I wanna focus on this particular activity and bring it closer to the attention of the students. Well, all I need to do is click on Zoom to region, mark the region that I wanna bring into attention, and suddenly that comes up much bigger on the screen. And of course, that will be exactly the same for the students. Using the Zoom tool can be great if you're doing activities perhaps where you want the students to very quickly brainstorm words. And this would be a perfect example. If we were to focus in on this picture and perhaps give the students just 30 seconds to think of as many different fruits and vegetables as they can possibly see, or we could even ask them to identify the colors as well if we wanted to make the activity slightly more difficult. And so the Zoom tool is very powerful for this because it can bring the pictures to life and obviously makes the picture much clearer on the screen for the students to see. On page 62, we've got this great infographic and it shows us the number of gallons of water that are consumed in the production of a whole range of uh, different products and what we can do is we could set this as a kind of reading skimming activity and try to get to the students to memorize as many of the different products and the number of gallons of water that are needed and we could even turn this into a little game by clicking here and making use of the timer now let's say we for example click on one minute so we might say for example click on one minute and say start and then we're only going to give the students just one minute to memorize as many of the products and the number of gallons as possible. And then after we can see how many of them they remember. So the timer and the stopwatch can be useful tools, particularly if we wanna make a kind of gamify an activity and add a competitive element to it and uh, set a time limit on how long the students perhaps take to do a quiz or to do a reading activity. The classroom presentation tool can really help you to bring screen share into life. There are a number of tools that can help you to do this. You can navigate easily between the pages to quickly get to the content that you want to look at with just a few clicks of a button. If you want to see the page as a double spread, you can click here or you can see it as a single spread. Now a really nice use of working with these pages is 
a way of hiding text or hiding pictures and then getting the students to guess perhaps what the text is about. So we've got an example here where we might click on the what we call the window shade and we can then hide the text from the students by just clicking here. So now we could set up an activity where we get the students to look at the picture and say to them, well, what do you think the text might be about that describes the picture? We might allow the students a couple of minutes to think about that or to take some notes. And then we can ask the students for their answers. And at an instant, we can just click on the button there and bring the content back out and show the text to the students. Now we've looked at some of the options that are available when we're using the teacher presentation tool but it's important to understand that we can actually pass control to the different tools that are available. We can get the students to actually take control of those tools and make use of them. And that's what I wanna focus on now. Remember, when you're working with tools like Zoom and Adobe Connect, there's normally the ability to pass control to the student. And uh, with Zoom, for example, if we come to the top of the screen, all we need to do is come over here to remote control and pass control to one of the users. Now I've only got one participant in the class, but if I click on Tom, from that moment on, Tom will have the ability to use all of the tools that are available on the interactive whiteboard because control has been passed over to Tom. And this can be a really powerful way of getting your students more engaged with the content on the screen. When we pass control of the mouse to the students, it allows many more opportunities for student engagement with the content. If we take this example here of the text from the book Keynote, we could ask the students to read this text and then passing control to some of the students, we could allow them to mark the words in the text they don't understand. So we might slightly zoom in and then students can come down click on the highlight tool and simply underline the words that they're not clear about. And this way the students can engage much more with the content that we're presenting to them. Again, if students have got control of the mouse, we can get them to engage with this text. For example, if we click here, open up the activity, it would be possible now for students to click onto the screen and if they have access to their keyboard, they can write the words into the screen and then check them afterwards. So getting the students involved in the process of working with the teacher presentation tool is really important. But another thing that we can do is begin to combine the tools available to us in the teacher presentation tool with the options that we've also got when working with tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, etc. For example, we normally have access to an interactive whiteboard. We normally have access to chat. Let me show you now some examples where we combine making use of the teacher presentation tool and the options available to us in the live presentation tool that we use when we're teaching. Remember, it is possible to combine the tools available in the teacher presentation tool with the standard tools that are available in technologies like Zoom. And we're gonna look at an example now. So first of all, we're gonna ask the students to focus in on this chart and try to memorize the information. We might give them two or three minutes this graph shows them the change in meat consumption between 1961 and 2012 in a variety of different countries around the world. Now we're going to close the graph down, stop screen sharing, now open up the interactive whiteboard software and now we can ask individual students to write the numbers onto the interactive whiteboard. The students, of course, have access to these different tools here within the interactive whiteboard because we can pass control to the students and then we might ask one particular student, okay, Argentina, and that student then can write 570 on the screen. So by combining the tools available in the teacher presentation tool 
and the tools that are available in the interactive whiteboard, we can create some very interesting activities. This combination of working with the content from the teacher presentation tool and the tools that are available to us in technologies like Zoom can be really powerful. Let's just take another example. Here, we're gonna ask our students, first of all, to read this text and to take some notes. After they've read the text, we're now gonna close the window down, jump over to the interactive whiteboard and ask the students to write sentences on the board that they can remember from the text. So once the students have read the text, close the window, stop sharing, open up the interactive whiteboard software and allow students to come to the top, click on text and then they can click and write their sentences. Now you can pass control to another student, they can click on the board and write their sentence here as well. So what we're trying to do when we do a Zoom lesson is to get the students more and more involved in the activities. And we can use the classroom presentation tool to help us do this. For example, here we've got a listening. We can just click here and listen. Unit four, lesson A, page 64, exercise A. Quiz, how much do you know about water? One, the Amazon River supplies about 20% of the fresh water that enters the world's oceans. Now we could play that through. And now what we can do is pass control to the students. If we just zoom in a little bit more by clicking here, we can now get the students to click on the tools below here, maybe making use of the pen. And they can now simply decide themselves what the answer to the question is and then mark the correct answer. Now you could ask students to do this in turns if you wanted to and that would be one way immediately to shift control over to students. Remember the students have access to the control of the screen. Most tools like Zoom, Webex, Adobe Connect have a chat facility and we can really exploit that when working with the content in the classroom presentation tool. For example, we've got a listen here. We could ask our students to listen and take notes. How can you help? You can become active, make noise. You can write a letter to your government and tell them that we need to focus on this very misunderstood creatures. And I hope many more people will join me. If we all so students can take notes. Afterwards, we can close down the window and now jump back to the chat window in Zoom. So we can stop sharing. And notice that if we click on the chat window here in Zoom, a chat window appears. And students now are able to write sentences related to the audio that they've just heard. Of course, that could be a reading text or video as well. The classroom presentation tool has some great resources. If we click over here on the left and come down to the resources, you'll notice that we've got audio content and video content related to the book. Let's click on this one here, B Therapy. If you notice below, you've also got the script. Today, in parts of Asia, People from all walks of life are choosing to be stung by bees, often dozens of times in one. Notice that the text highlights as the video plays. I would have symptoms of a tingling and numbness in my hands. It was excruciating pain. Then, Sho Rong heard about bee sting therapy. One possible activity that you could do with the students is to get them to write the script. You could turn the audio off, 
play the video and the students read out the script. Now what you could possibly do is divide the video up so that different students write different parts of the script for the video. Then you can play the video back and the students read out their script. I really hope that's given you some ideas about how you can combine using the teacher presentation tool with the webinar tool that you use, perhaps Zoom or WebEx, etc. One tip I want to give you is when you start a lesson, always try to start immediately with some type of activity that will get the students immediately engaged. I watch a lot of lessons, a lot of live lessons using Zoom, and I have noticed that often it's a while before the teachers actually get the students involved in the activity. And I think that's a big mistake. I would start with some type of activity that quickly gets them to write in the chat window, perhaps gets them to uh, interact with the content on the screen, but some type of activity that very quickly gets them engaged with the content so that they understand that this is gonna be a really active lesson. Hope that content was useful to you and thank you very much.